Hambalang Quarry is composed of several landscapes. While surveying our study area, we were also given the opportunity to view these landscapes and compare our unreclaimed site with its past and potential future. A current active site and reclaimed land. For now, let's look at the abandoned land that will serve as our research site for the next week. Before warned, there's a lot of pointing as we look for the best sites to collect data, which in our case means solitary growing Calotropicia gentia and bare land where nothing is growing. While Calotropis gigantia can be found everywhere, the landscape is dominated by the invasive Penicetum grass. This grass is the first thing to grow in this quarry during the early stage of natural succession. We might refer to this landscape as rocky, but this isn't rock. It's actually just dry clay, which has hardened under the harsh sunlight and dry heat. This is the sort of environment early successional species have to endure. But inhospitable as it may seem, both plants and animals find a way to the area, suggesting that merely encouraging natural recolonization and allowing natural succession to take its course can be sufficient in the restoration of the ecosystem. Here we find a reclaimed quarry, rich in vegetation. Calotropis gigantea is noticeably absent as we'd expect from an ecosystem at this stage of succession. What we do see, however, is cadam, mahogany, albicia, banana, and other species which have been planted by local people and the company for food, wood, and energy. Although this land initially appears to have been successfully rehabilitated using technical reclamation, which is the most common method of post-mining rehabilitation, it has led to an ecosystem that deviates from its natural state. In other words, its biodiversity is not composed of native plant species. The planting of timber species has also forced the ecosystem to mature early. This active work site illustrates the original condition of the abandoned quarry, devoid of vegetation on all but the outskirts. Surprisingly, Calotropis gigantea can even be found here, as you can see in this picture. Eventually, this site will have to be rehabilitated as well, which is why it's important to develop a cost-effective rehabilitation strategy. Heidelberg Cement's guidelines for restoration in Asia emphasize the importance of indigenous and regionally typical plant species. In Calotropis gigantea, we have found such a species, one with economic and cultural value in addition to its ecological importance. With the location scouted, we are now able to begin data collection in the morning. See you then!